Dawn of X is the 2019 relaunch of the X Men franchise, the follow up to Jonathan Hickman's House of X and Powers of Ten events. Released this month and in upcoming months, these new additions are drastically changing the way the X Men are portrayed. And it's incredibly fascinating. So today we are counting down the top 10 Dawn of X facts that change everything. Think of this as a crash course into what exactly has been going on over the course of House of X and Powers of Ten, and how Dawn of X will continue to explore these new changes in the near future. And of course, keep in mind that this video features a ton of spoilers for House of X and Powers of Ten. So you've been warned my friends. With that in mind, let's get to it. In at number 10, the ongoing series. Ok, for starters, let's break down what has happened so far. The status quo of mutant kind has changed. No longer are the mutants trying to work alongside humans, but have separated themselves with an almost emotionally alien distance. Which is, you know, further developing the themes of alien otherness that has always defined the mutants, i.e. the whole mutant metaphor that has been there since its existence. Xenophobia, racism and whatnot. This makes what we've seen so far unsettling and fascinating. The sentient island Krakoa has been made into the mutant sovereign nation. And mutants have had enough of suffering. It's an age where Homo Superior has reclaimed its agency over Homo Sapiens. It also means that all of the previous X-Men comics are being rebooted, so to speak. And we're getting launches of new volumes of series that are really, really exciting. So far we know that there are three series which have already begun that will continue to be ongoing in the X-Men franchise. Those are Volume 5 of the X-Men, of course, The Marauders, and Volume 4 of Excalibur. In addition to that, seven other series are set to be released, starting with with November releases X Force, New Mutants, and Fallen Angels. February will bring us Wolverine Volume 7, X Men Giant Size, X Corp, and the Untitled Moira McTaggart series. There is also an additional X Men Fantastic Four crossover limited series to be released in February of next year. Up next, number 9, Moira and the Timelines. Speaking of Moira McTaggart, she plays a massive role in this new relaunch. Revealed in House of X, Moira actually has mutant abilities. She possesses the power of reincarnation, starting her life again in the past after she dies possessing all of the memories of her previous lives. She also is alive, FYI, having faked her death at the hands of the Brotherhood, but we will not get into that now. <laughs> Anywho, Moira has experienced 10 different lifetimes, each with a different outcome, and her goal is to find the outcome in which mutant kind succeeds. Her ninth life saw her shacking up with Apocalypse in an attempt to ensure the future of mutant kind after failing to really do so in those previous lives. Now she's trying something truly revolutionary and breaking all the rules, as House of X issue 2 describes it. Now she has taken up residence in Krakoa in no place, a black zone where she works with Charles Xavier and Magneto using the knowledge gained from her past lives, although she grows increasingly paranoid of other precognitive mutants, like the idea of destiny being revived for Mystique. This is because Moira is afraid that other precognitive mutants may discover that, really, they're doomed. Up next at 8, the teams. So with all those titles, let's talk about which characters you can expect to be rubbing shoulders. For starters, X-Men Volume 5, the flagship title, will largely follow the X-Men team led by Cyclops with Jean Grey, Cable, Rachel Summers, Havoc, Corsair, Vulcan and Wolverine retaining membership. Oh yes, it is very much a family affair. Then there's the Marauders, which are made up of Kitty Pride, Storm, Iceman, Pyro, and Bishop, with Emma Frost and Sebastian Shaw as supporting cast in their stories. Excalibur's team will consist of Captain Britain, Rogue, Gambit, Jubilee, and Richter. And the team also includes Big Bad Apocalypse, who was added to that roster by Marvel in order to change the way that we see and think about the character. He's said to be going on a journey of self discovery. New mutants will follow Magic, Sunspot, Wolfsbane, Mirage, Karma, Cypher, Mondo, and Chamber, with appearances by the Starjammers. Fallen Angels is a revival of the 1987 series following Psylocke, Cable, and X 23. And of course, X Force, the mutant Black Ops team, will consist of Beast, Jean Grey, Black Tom, Sage, Domino, Wolverine, Colossus, and Kid Omega. In at number 7, Make More Mutants. There are three rules established for this new sovereign nation. Murder no man, respect this sacred land, and make more mutants. In House of X issue 6, we see the newly formed Krakoa government, called the Quiet Council, sit down and establish these rules. And Kurt Wagner, aka Nightcrawler, was a little horny devil who chimed in with his god's wisdom saying, I quote, And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And then with a little grin on his little blue face, he exclaimed that we need to make more mutants. 
pervy little devil. And Charles Xavier was like, yeah bro, that's a good point, let's get busy. But he didn't exactly say it like that. It looks like this is something that Wolverine, Cyclops, and Jean Grey are taking in stride. In X-Men issue 1, we got to see Scott's new Krakoan made house on the moon, where he and the X-Men all had a big old family dinner with Corsair, his daddy dearest. And in that issue, we got to see a layout of the house. Now take a look at that. Cyclops, Wolverine, and Jean's rooms are all next to another, with Jean's room in the middle. And out of all of the rooms in the entire building, theirs are the only ones connected by open doors. And on top of that, we got this panel of them all super close and enjoying each other's company. Oh, we see your hand on Logan's abs there, Scott, we do. This obviously has led to speculation that the three of them are now in an open relationship. To better live up to that make more mutants rule. And if we're being honest, we're kind of super into it. And at number six, Lionel Francis Yu. Diverting a little bit from the stories to one of the creatives behind them, let's talk a little bit about Lionel Yu. Yu is working with his former Avengers partner, Jonathan Hickman, who is spearheading the whole Dawn of X relaunch of the franchise. But this isn't the first time that he's been a part of a brand new era for mutant kind in Marvel's panels. He illustrated part of Chris Claremont's run on volume 2 of the X-Men comics, also known as X-Men Legacy. Plus he got his start in comics thanks to the X-Men, or rather, specifically one X-Men member, Wolverine. He was first recognized after winning the Wizards Drawing Board contest when he drew the character and eventually got hired by Wildstorm, where samples of his work were eventually passed on to Marvel, working alongside writers the likes of Larry Hama, Eric Larson, and of course, Chris Claremont too. Moving on to number five, Psylocke and Betsy Braddock. No more racial appropriation for Psylocke. Woo! The relaunch now sees Betsy Braddock replacing her brother as Captain Britain, reunited with her original body and no longer in the body of ninja assassin Kwanin. For years, Betsy has been living inside of Kwanin's body in one of the most racially controversial moves ever pulled by Marvel. Looks like they're trying to do it right this time around though, because Betsy returning to her body isn't the only development for the character. She may be Captain Britain now, but Psylocke still lives on. And because of that, it's not the end for Kwanin. She's now taken up the Psylocke mantle in Fallen Angels, which follows mutants who feel out of place on Krakoa. Moving on to another mutant who feels out of place, in at number 4, Kitty Pride is a liberating pirate. There's a wonderful irony about a woman who can phase through anything and not being able to walk through the border of Krakoa. This development for Kitty Pride poses big questions as to why Krakoa doesn't let in all mutants, and how it can be a sanctuary for mutant life if it rejects mutants who have long been considered accepted by the mutant community, the X-Men, and Charles Xavier. This also creates a very interesting situation for Kitty, and whether or not she truly believes that Krakoa is the right choice. She does eventually get in, but as a character who has previously led the X-Men, she struggles with this question, and it's very opportune that Emma Frost shows up to offer her position as her Red Queen, traveling across the globe working for Emma's new Hellfire trading company to offer assistance to mutants who can't make it to Krakoa and to safeguard goods. Some of the global entrance ways to Krakoa have been outfitted with military personnel preventing mutants from making the trip there, or have mutant hunting creatures in the area, which is sadistic as hell. This begins the Marauders, a group of seafaring liberators led by Kitty Pride, who has adopted this independent pirate vibe wholeheartedly. Or should we say Kate Pride now? Because she's all grown up and also would like to be called Kate as she stresses in the end of the issue. Moving on to number three, Wolverine. Wolverine issue one is set to drop in February 2020, and that is super exciting. The black and white preview for this issue that has been released includes a subtle yet tender moment between him and Jean Grey, with the two of them seemingly entertaining a group of children on Krakoa, but having obvious chemistry while doing it. This further implies that that whole Three's Company theory that has emerged about Logan, Jean, and Scott may actually be be a thing. What a thruple they would be. But perhaps the most astonishing thing, or second most astonishing thing if the thruple thing is still blowing your mind, about Wolverine's new title is who is behind it. Wolverine issue 1 sees comic book legend Adam Kubert returning to the Marvel fold, illustrating for the series. Moving on to number 2, Charles Xavier. Charles Xavier has shifted perspectives. Fed up with fighting for acceptance and constantly dealing with persecution, Professor X has altered his approach. In tangent with the reveal of Moira's mutant abilities in her 10th life, we see her approach Charles Xavier and allow him to read her mind and see the nine lives prior, and what she's learned, and how each attempt still concludes in tragedy for mutant kind. The House of X series gave us insight as to how Charles, the rest of the X-Men, and other mutants across the globe are all fed up with this, and now he's formed an alliance with Magneto, and also an alliance with Mr. Sinister, who helps him cheat death itself, in order to help save mutant kind once and for all. 
seemingly. After witnessing the deaths of the X-Men in House of X4 via Jean's telepathy until her death severed that connection, Xavier says the words, no more, refusing to rely on appealing to humanity's better nature. Enough is enough. Too many mutants have been murdered or have died over the years and all throughout more of his lives as well. That this is now impossible for Xavier to ignore, and he's running things with a much more iron fist. For example, Sabretooth who is punished by mutant law finds himself falling into the dark void within Krakoa, not being killed but having to suffer a horrifying exile instead. There is also that drug thing. The fact that they've decided to deny humanity access to Krakoan made pharmaceuticals that extend human lifespans, aid in rehabilitating for mental trauma, and cure terminal diseases is something that feels like a big F you to humanity as far as Xavier is concerned. But it is also one of the trade offs in order to retain a peaceful coexistence. In at number one, redefining the X Men and death in comics. By the end of House of X, new rules have been established, and not only on Krakoa. Xavier has declared that mutants will no longer be judged by human laws, but by mutant laws. The demands laid out by Krakoa in terms of coexisting with humanity are not negotiable. Humans agree to these terms that make mutants' lives better, and in return, mutants will help them, like the medical and technological advancements that exist on Krakoa developed by mutants. But we also see some interesting developments at the end of House of X, like old foes now respecting one another. Jean Grey and Emma Frost share a beer. Cyclops and his brother have reconciled with a hug. Magneto and Xavier obviously are working side by side now. And then there's that thruple that we mentioned earlier too. And let's not get started on the whole looming doom of the phalanx, that whole sacrifice of all mutant life in order to amalgamate every mutant mind into its world mind of sentience containing every mutant thought and memory. The ultimate way for mutant kind to endure and survive, but at the ultimate cost of sacrificing themselves. Now that being said, we've also witnessed how Xavier has managed to cheat death itself using the combined powers of Proteus, Tempest, Elixir, and Gold Balls. Bless him for having a purpose now, BT Dubs. Which also is impactful in terms of the way that we perceive death in comic books. Now, death in comics has long been an overused storytelling tool, but now it is a concept that Dawn of X is morphing, taking the previous metatextual knowledge readers had about the inevitable resurrection of dead characters in comic books, and perhaps breathing new life and meaning into how death will be approached in the future of some of our favorite panels. Death is a temporary pain in Dawn of X. And now a meaningless tool has been given meaning again. And that's a pretty big deal, you guys. All right, there we have it, friends. What are your expectations and predictions for the rest of Dawn of X? Give us a shout in those comments below and share your thoughts and feels. If you guys dug this video, be sure to spread that love, hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more lists just like this one. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next video.